Right. I'm getting so carried away, I almost forgot one of the most crucial reasons why we're here. Here you go. That was once a pub. Well, better go. Fresh as be open in a minute. Oh, well, 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 look at this. What is this? Oh, it's a nice big building. I used to work in that. John Lennon, Bob Dylan, Elvis. Most famous nude swing baths. We are on Leighton Road. Ah, Leighton Road. You remember earlier I said, north of Leighton Road, you've got Cambridge named streets. South, you've got the Oxford named streets, which I now think of as Oxford because of the Oxford pub. You can see some nice flats here on the left. Let's have a look at these two flats a minute. So guess what? We're revisiting one of our favorite themes again. See that block there, the new build? This one, that new build. Guess what that was before it became a lovely, nice new looking block of flats. That's right, that was a pub. It was like a pub there, just there. It wasn't as tall as that, I don't think. And it was called the Leighton. One of the few pubs that I actually never actually went in when I was living around here. I always regretted it because suddenly it closed. It was closed for ages. That's what happened, planning permission and all that. Then it was flattened. Next thing, it was flats. I mean, they're nice flats. People need housing, but it's just sort of, I realized there's a theme running here that pubs are closing all over the place. And I'm sure you're finding the same in your areas, maybe. People don't go out drinking anymore. They can't afford it. I don't know, I don't drink much myself. I don't know if it's good or bad. It feels bad for society, though. Because that's what the UK is all about. Pub culture. The little estate next to where the Leighton pub was. Let's have a quick look through. Behind the nasty graffiti, you can see a pair of legs there and a pair of legs there. It's a real shame because I watched this being done. It was a really cool piece of artwork. I'll see if I can dig out a picture for it. That there's Putin. Those legs are Zelensky's. You can just about see his head there. And they were, oh, they were greeting each other, I think. I watched the guy doing it and it was, it was very cool. It's a shame they ruined it with some bog standard crap graffiti never mind right it's time to explain the story and the reason why we're here in Kentish Town so this is Leighton Grove I didn't live on Leighton Grove I live just there on Leighton Road well, I'll take you there in a minute oh, I missed this spot life moves on doesn't it that's how it goes so you remember in the last episode we were over on Grafton Road, right on the western side of Kentish Town, at that big three-story house. At one point there was four people living there, 1.3 people, and eventually just two of us living there. And it was a great spot. And things were going well. Uh, it was all good. I had loads of space, had a little garden, uh, had the motorbikes. And then out of the blue, the landlord decided, okay, he wants it back. But he didn't do it in a, I want it back, you know, year six months sort of thing. He did it by hiking up the rent 50% or maybe 100%. It was just something ridiculous. We couldn't afford it. He gave us maybe a, a month's notice or something to like next month you're paying twice as much. So that was the end of it. We had to move. That really sucked. So that must have been around 2013, I think, which all in all, not being depressing, but it was a bad year for me. Pretty much everything went wrong that year. It was a bit of a write-off. Lots of things happened. I lost my job, I had a house to sell. I couldn't sell it. it. Took months and months and months. I was paying for that. And then we got, not exactly evicted, but we had to move out of our, where we've been living for a long time. So lots of things all came together. You know, it's like, and we had to get the hell out. So I frantically started looking around for somewhere else to live. So I had a bit of a look and I saw some advert, probably online, and it was for a place nearby, just here. And I went to see it the same day, phoned him, got to see it the same day. The guy was there, he was working on the place at the time. And I think I agreed there and then to pay the deposit and take it. I took a real chance. The guy was really nice and he stayed really nice and we actually got quite friendly. A little two bed flat, maisonette, two story, basement and first floor. But it was great because he was doing it all up really quirky 
had things like a shower in the bedroom, a toilet under the stairs hidden away, and the absolute pinnacle of it all is that it had a private driveway. And we had two motorbikes at the time. And that's part of the reason why looking for somewhere to live was such a mission. We had to like house safely two motorbikes. And that was driving me insane. Where am I gonna put these two bikes? But this had a drive that we could use and I could lock them up together and make them secure. That was a big selling point for me. On top of that, the place where I happened to be working at that time was just down the road, about 150 meters away. Result. Well, just to give you an idea of the sort of area we were living in when we moved, this is where we came. If I keep panning round, this is the back wall of it. Because just over there was that flat. So we had a little garden and everything, a little triangular garden. So not only do we get a driveway at the front, we get two stories, get somewhere to park the motorbikes. We also get a little back garden where we can have a little barbecue. Oh, and we had the cat, we had Tommy, so we had to worry about him, which was a worry, because this is a really busy area. It's a short cut of a street and there's a main road there, but he's a streetwise cat. <clears throat> he did all right, he survived, and he's still, still going strong now. So we're gonna go around the front now and have a look what it looks like. So this here Leighton Grove leads down onto Leighton Road. And a lot of people, including myself, use it as a bit of a shortcut. That's the flat, that's the drive. It was the first two floors, the basement and that one. But to get to the tube station, you just walk down there. You also walk down there, you're at the assembly house. You're at the Kentish Town Forum. This spot was so good. <coughs> so popular and I could see so much potential in it that we actually tried to buy it off the landlord. We had a meeting with them, they didn't really know what it was about but we met up and we tried to make them an offer but they very quickly explained that they had a second place they were living in and if they did do that they would get really hit with inheritance tax. So it wasn't going to happen unfortunately but it was definitely worth a try. I saw him a little while ago and he explained that they had all sorts of damn problems and issues with it. <laughs> so if we had bought it, we would have stretched ourselves really thin and probably wouldn't have had any money to deal with stuff like that. So maybe it was a kind of a blessing that we never got to buy it in the end. Well, if we had bought it, one thing I can say is we would have had a famous neighbor, two of them in fact, and one of them would have been a certain Mr. Charles Dance, very distinguished English gentleman. And the other one would have been a famous newsreader at the time called John Snow. And both of them live within a couple of hundred meters of where I am right now. I'm obviously not going to give it away, but they are just, just here in this little spot. Let's go and have a look again down in the Oxford area. It's really nice down there. Right, we came down here earlier, but very briefly, this big Victorian warehouse building is where I worked for 12 years some of which when I was living just back there still hurts a little bit if I'm honest and I'm certainly not going to promote them <laughs> all right let's go down Islip Street so while I remember other notable residents that live in the area and I don't know where they are famous actor Bill Nye he was great Noel Fielding comedian lives here people no longer with us like Karl Marx He's from the area. So we've got a cracking little pub on the corner here. Still going strong, the line and unicorn. Really, really nice. These kids on their toy motorbikes, they haven't got a clue. George Orwell, Tom Hiddleston, Eddie Grant. Sir Keir Starmer in the village store. Yeah. Semi detached pairs. I would recommend this side, the east side of the high street, if you've got an option, plenty of money. And I mean, plenty of money if you're going to buy somewhere. A really short walk to get to that high street where you can buy all your six pound loaves of bread and all your organic food. I mean, look at that. How nice. What an 
In 1884, four elephants were being transported on a train and two of them escaped. So they were on the run in Kentish Town for, I don't know, a couple of days maybe. And they were running amok, panicking and running down streets and getting, getting into back alleys and stuff like that. And eventually they got a bit scared and they ran into a couple of houses. Uh, but they obviously couldn't go in the houses. And they fell through some sort of platform area and ended up in a sort of a front basement of a couple of houses at Pemberton Terrace. And that's where they were sort of recaptured. And to get them out of that basement, they had to bring the other two elephants to help get them out. Apparently it was in the local papers at the time. Elephants on the loose in Kentish Town. Better keep my eyes open. Just, ah, uh, sold by the VW. the ramp. Joking. Very well known Kentish Town sign. The Bullen Gate. Back by the Forum. Back by the big ass church. Just like last week. More history. Getting good at this. Turning into a historian. Back in the 19th and early 20th centuries, Kentish Town was known for its piano and organ building. And you can still see evidence of that here and there in the naming of things. So let's have a look up here, if I can get across. So I remember these being built as well, in the piano yard. So I'm guessing maybe this was an old piano factory, perhaps. Just have a quick look. It looks like I've just set an alarm off. <laughs> oh well, just leave the piano yard before I get arrested. I mean, that's just beautiful. That is just beautiful. What a block. Why do I like these things? I don't know. We've got a nice house, it's got a greenhouse built on top of it. You see that every day. I know nothing about this little pocket really. And it's around here that Trigger lived. Roger Lloyd Pack lived around here anyway. This was his neighbourhood. And how very lovely it is. This is the main junction where all roads come together from Kentish Town, Archway and Tufnell Park. So this is like a five-way junction. So we've got Fortress Road going down there. That takes you into Kentish Town. You've got Tufnell Park tube station there on Brecknock Road, which we were on earlier. Tufnell Park Road going down there takes you down to Holloway Road, straight down there. Junction Road there takes you straight up to Archway. You've got the Boston Arms Music Pub here. This road takes you up into Dartmouth Park. And there you have it. The five road junction of Tufnell Park. Pretty quiet right now, but gets pretty hectic early in the morning. I'm thinking if I keep it in the NW5 Kentish Town area, that means sticking to this bit. I'm going up to Dartmouth Park and I'm going to look at that. It's a bit more residential, not so scuzzy, but I think that'll mean we can leave those other areas to another time. Dartmouth Park, and it's a hill, and I'm going to go up it. So let's see how we get on. Right there on the left, we've got a pub. A really nice pub, what do you know? It's called the Lord Palmerston. That was the first place we bought two drinks, two pints of beer, that came to over 10 pounds. <laughs> that tells you how long ago that was. Do you want a church name? Shall I give it to you? St. Mary Brookfield. There you go, now you know. We can enjoy some of the Dartmouth Park Hill scenery. Look at this. So we are touching on Highgate right now. Look at the way the houses have changed all of a sudden. All red brick. Not very lovely. No cycling everywhere. Ugh. Come on. Lovely tennis courts. It's a bit like Paddington Recreation Ground, isn't it? Oh, booze. Oh, not booze. Okay. Now you can really tell where we are. That is croquet going on. How many parks do you come with that play croquet? So I was mentioning earlier on about the River Fleet and where it starts from. Well, this is one of those ponds. So there are further ponds further up and it originates up in the top of Highgate and Hampstead up there. It comes down and down into different ponds. And this is one of the lower ones. This might even be the very bottom one. And you probably can't see it. I can hardly see it, but 
somewhere just over there is an exit where the river then will go underground. There's a heron, which will go underground and become a subterranean river and follow the path all the way down through Kentish Town, King's Cross, Farringdon, Holborn, and eventually out into the River Thames. Hello. I haven't got anything for you. That's sorry. It's just how it goes. Whoa, look at this one. You don't expect to get fed round here. This is nice. This is one of the other ponds, one of the bigger ones. But this is, as you can probably see, the male swimming pond. There's the changing huts, changing area. And there's some people in there swimming today. So this one is fed from a one above it. This one's fed. It wants to go un underground again, feeding this one, and then down into the, the Fleet River. So you've got separate men's and women's ponds. We saw the men's earlier, and we just went past the ladies' ones, or the women's ponds. It goes back to Victorian times before they had mixed swimming. I think that's where the Lido came into it. They could have mixed bars, mixed swimming. So for a lot of people, that was a plus. Here's another pond. So we've got about four of them so far. It feels pretty mellow this trip today. Just a nice day out in the sun is what it feels like. More of a relaxed cruise around North London. Gotta get up this hill. Here we have an extremely spectacular Kenwood House at the very top of Hampstead Heath. Wonderful old stately home. It's very, very nice. Come up on a Sunday, you can't move. You can go inside, but if you come here to Hampstead, it's not far to walk up here. I've walked up here today. Yeah, you can get off at Hampstead and walk your way across from that direction. You go through tunnels, things like this. Notice how the back isn't quite as spectacular as the front. Nice as it is, they make the other side the really spectacular looking side that overlooks the views and this is like, like a rear entrance. Well, I promised to do Hampstead Heath and Hampstead properly another time. But I feel that now that we're here, we might as well give you a little taster of what it's all about. This is real money country, beautiful part of London. It's a place where all the celebs want to be, understandably why. We'll just take one last look at a pub in the area. It's called the Spaniards. They do a fantastic Sunday roast, amongst other things. This is an interesting little bit. You can only get one car through at a time. This is where you need that all important British tolerance. I see there they have a sign that says, award-winning garden. And to be honest, it is a nice garden. I've been, we've had lunch, we've had drinks. I've seen famous people in there, but it's got a lot of history, that pub. Probably goes back to Dick Turpin's times. 1600s maybe. It's one of those with all the rickety floorboards that go the wrong direction. Sign here, let's find out a little bit about this toll gate house. So we go, this 18th century building was erected to collect tolls from those passing through the western entrance to the estates of the bishops of London. Ah, erected by Heath and Hampstead Society. Bishops. Now then. Hmm. There we go. It's called the Bishop's Avenue. That's why I had a little moment there when I saw the Bishop's thing. Because this is Bishop's Avenue, where every house is worth at least 20 million. I kid you not. I mean, holy, I mean, it's just insane. I call it the Builder's Avenue, because it never stops being built on. We're always building something here. A cannon, oh, okay. Cannons and bishops. This goes to show a little bit about how much power and wealth religion has in this country, or did have. Probably from the Catholic Church? Maybe? I don't know. I mean, a lot of them, you can't even see, they've probably been left to ruin. The owners maybe have died, or maybe they're not allowed back in the country. That's a strong possibility, you know? They would have been Russian oligarchs, and that one's flattened. So a lot of what happens here is they, they'll buy a house, no matter what shape it's in, 
absolutely flatten it, raise it to the ground and start from scratch. They'll have their architects who will have designed something and they'll start all over again. There's something in there you might see. It is huge. They'll be flats. But there's houses down here, big whoppers like that thing. I hope you can see it, my finger's not in the way. Building sites, building sites, building sites. There, nice one, old one. Glendale, big one there. For sale. I mean, people, basically, it's a kind of money laundering. <laughs> You know, you get a lot of money from somehow, uh, stick it in property, leave it here in Bishop's Avenue. There you go, tying up 20 million pounds, 30 million, 40, 50 million pounds. And that's it, you're good to go. Sell it 10 years later for 60 or 70 or 80 million pounds. Life on the Bishops, huh? Well, I just realized, today's trip to Kentish Town, part two, brings us to the end of the story of my life, I suppose, in London and where I lived up until now. So the next episode is gonna be a place of my choice. I don't know where it's gonna be, I've got a few options. So it could be somewhere really, really random, a little bit outside of London. It could be further in, it could be further east, it could be west, it could be anywhere. If you've got any ideas, any suggestions, throw them in the hat. And at some point, I'll get out there and have a look and see what those areas are all about, all right? Well, as we cruise along the quaint middle-class streets of Muswell Hill, leaving Camden and Kentish Town behind, I will see you next time, somewhere, Oscarzy London. <laughs>